Greetings ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for listening to this webinar today. It's on our Kenya program and it's based on a recent visit I had in Kenya. I am Karin Nzelen, one of the admissions counselors here at SIT Study Abroad and I just want to share with you a little knowledge um, on what I experience at the program or what students who attend the program get to experience. So here is a map of Kenya. As you can see, it's a really huge country. And the reason why I point this out is just to say, with all the security concerns that have been going on in Kenya and why a lot of people are slow to going to Kenya based on what has happened in the past, these distances are so huge. Not to say these concerns are not valid or should not be taken into account, but it's just to point out to you that the, the moves SIT has made to take these concerns into consideration. We have completely moved away from Mombasa and the coastal areas. We have even moved away our head office from Nairobi and we are situated in Kisumu right now. It's a really beautiful countryside and a growing town um, around the Lake Victoria borders. And um, our students are based there. That's like a hub for most of the international organizations in Kenya. And the students do go to Nairobi and they do, um, they are actually situated at the um, American University premises when they are in Nairobi. And they are there for a couple of weeks. They also go on excursion to Rwanda, Kigali, which is also part of the study. And they spend a couple of days in Uganda um, when, before they come back and complete their program again in Kisumu. So in so many ways, the program in Kenya has a comparative angle to it. So if you're going on the Kenya program, you get a chance to go to Rwanda and Uganda, and you get to have that ability or understanding of the three different countries and compare the critical global issue in hand. So talking about critical global issues, our programs here at SIT are broken down into critical global issues. And so what's the one for Kenya? In summary, the Kenya program looks into public health issues generally. And when we talk public health, it's a really huge, huge um, area of um, interest. So the topic of the program says it all. It's urbanization, health, and human rights. And when you look at into detail of what urbanization and health and human rights is all about, you can see the relationship with these different subtopics as far as public health is concerned. So let's, let's go into the breakdown right now. Urbanization, the program is broken into three parts. They visit different economic backgrounds and students get to do homestays in these different environments. So while in Kisumu, Kisumu is relatively a middle class society. Semenya is actually a working class society and Nairobi is relatively a higher class society. So students get to stay in these different places and can get a sense of what Kenya is like generally or the reality around Kenya generally. Of course, you don't come out an expert in any way, but you get a sense of it. So in Kisumu and Nairobi, you get to see the effects of urbanization at so many different levels. So that's just an urbanization angle. The program has a great partnership with the Kenya Medical Research Institute, KEMRI, which houses the CDC research team. And I have a few photos to share with you. But while I share the photos, I'm going to tell you a little bit. But before I share the photos, I'll tell you a little bit about what the CDC Research Foundation actually houses or what it does. It has histology laboratories, endoscopy services, TB laboratories, HIV P3 laboratories, CD4 and CDB counts. IHV viral load, adult HIV PCR diagnosis, infant HIV PCR diagnosis, HIV serological diagnosis, water microbiology analysis, food microbiology analysis, food and water microbiology analysis, evaluation of antiseptic disinfectants, fungal culture identification, culture media supply, food handler certification, tissue culture identification, culture media supply, tissue culture, chest, skull, spine, upper limb, lower limb x-rays, contrast media examination, ultrasound scans, biochemistry, hematology, bacteriology, parasitology. So basically these are the different services that um, Camry actually has in place and 
the pictures are just going to give you an idea of the equipment present um, at Camry. So Camry, as you can see, they have a quality policy statement. The Kenya Medical Research Institute is committed to improving the quality of human health through research capacity building, innovation, and service delivery that consistently meets and exceeds the needs and expectations of our customers. So you can actually pause and take a read around that. But I got to walk into most of these um, laboratories. Uh, unfortunately, I can't give you like a detailed overview, but if you come on the program, of course you get to do this tour, and of course you get to get an opportunity to actually do an internship or some work at some level with these people. They love their jobs very much. This actually was one of the TB labs um, we got to see, and um, I really was not inside the lab. This was actually through glass doors that I was able to take these pictures. As you can see, the staff who work, they are very well protected. Their equipment top-notch. Um, they keep the, the different bacterials under different conditions to be able to keep carrying out the research. Um, again, this is just like another incubator or refrigeration, different kinds of refrigerations that they keep the bacterials um, um, to be able to continue their research in cases that they keep them for longer periods of time to figure out what exactly is going on um, or to figure out a cure for the different bacterials or the different individuals with the bacterials. Another refrigeration um, unit, CDC Camry Schizo Laboratory, freezer number five, contains Schizo Laboratory, yep, more um, equipment. Again, like I said, I was just taking all these pictures just so you get a sense of the equipment available to them. These are different rooms. Some of them I got to go in, like these ones um, with the refrigerate, refrigerators, I was actually able to walk into them. Um, but then here there is also, if you look at the, the picture to the left of the screen, and the picture to the right, they're actually the same room, but the picture to the left actually has some little incubators, and, and this is in a situation, these incubators are actually shared in the different health centers, and they can get immediate results for TB tests, like that can give you like short-term results before further um, um, research is done on on the different um, bacteria that are collected from the patients. So these little incubators actually have compartments somewhere in the middle that they can give you results immediately. So they use them at little health centers and also at the Camry um, venue, they have it sometimes because certain research components need to be done in like the dark room. So if they turn off the lights in this room, which is the exact same room to the right, it has that amount of darkness to it, just to show how efficient um, the research in there actually goes. Here is actually around uh, malaria. Like I said, there are different kinds of research that takes place in, in Camry. So the, the two containers here actually contains different kinds of mosquitoes. And the next picture actually shows you how they collect it out. This guy is actually sucking it, sucking the mosquitoes out through this tube, and they're able to test um, the different mosquitoes for the different levels of um, contamination and how to figure out cures or um, sprays that can actually work on the different kinds of mosquitoes and the different kinds of illnesses that they carry. Again, this is something you get to see in death. Now, this was actually part of the HIV AIDS um, laboratory. So this girl is actually collecting different blood samples and they are well labeled and all that. So um, I, I think the picture in the dark room actually had one of the guys who actually works on the database as well. You could see the guy sitting in the computer. They actually work on a lot of um, data entry, making sure um, the samples actually match the people who actually have it. Because you can imagine if an error goes on here, but they are pretty effective. They explain that as well in detail to us, which you will get a chance to experience if you come on our program. This is still part of the HIV and AIDS um, um, laboratory. Um, again, just showing you the equipment and the amount of work that goes on in there. This was... Um, Part of the malaria, um, actually there are microscopes here. I actually got a chance to look to fi figure out a sample that had malaria. So that's me in the background actually looking through the microscope. 
and I was able to see malaria. I have had malaria before, but it was an awesome experience actually getting to see it. And the girl who took the pictures, Christine, she's actually um, one of the office uh, managers at our center in camp in um, in Kisumu. She's awesome. Um, you would you would love meeting her. And then Zoonosis um, Molecular and Serology Lab. I think that was more around animals. I didn't do much research in there. Oh, I didn't get to look at it more, but of course, you get a chance to if you're interested. Moving on and talking human rights. Once students are able to see these different living standards and communities affected by rapid urbanization, they get to realize that those who are negatively affected by urbanization are most vulnerable communities, and their health is definitely easily affected by the fact that they live in very poor hygienic conditions, and of course, their human rights are directly affected by their lack of voice in their community. So again, I'm going to show you a few, a few pictures of um, some of these communities I visited. This is actually in Nairobi, and you can see some of the students who are on the program were actually in this, in this picture. This is one of the slums in Nairobi that we got to visit, and um, the work that different organizations are doing, they were actually visiting a library that one of the, it actually had, a, the, the, the organization that was taking care of this library actually has a YMCA idea to it. You know, they actually have been working with their communities with kids from really young ages through sports, you know, trying to get them off the streets, trying to get them off disease or HIV and AIDS or loitering, but pushing them towards education through sports. So there were a lot of opportunities and you get to see that as well. It was very enlightening and interesting. This community actually is in Kisumu. You get to visit this community as well. Um, the students got to see a lot of work that is done in this community and you can see these are people's homes. And the challenge here is the city, the city area or the high-end area is just across the street from them. These people actually own land titles to these places that they've built these houses. So this is actual living conditions or living environments for these people. So you can see how just looking at this, just imagining growing up in a place like this. Somebody's front yard is somebody's backyard. You know, they have bathrooms pretty much right where people are walking past. And this community, in the next picture, if you look across from on the street, there is a major highway going through them, and on the other side, there are like the major industries. There is this particular industry that does fillet, like this, this, the, the export the fillet fish, which I'm going to show you more pictures about in a few minutes. But they are actually, the, the people in this community, that is, they actually leave off the remnants of what these industries are throwing out, which now they sell to them because they realize how much is useful to the people. But these slums are people's homes. The next picture actually shows you they, act, they, they got um, um, funding and were able to build this community center. Um, it was really sunny. I couldn't see what pictures my phone was taking at this time, so I cut it off. But it's a community center where upstairs they actually have like a... Um, like a hall where people can come and hold meetings. And downstairs is a male and a female bathroom, and then in the middle is a kitchen where you can come to cook. So it's so bad. You come and pay, and you use the bathroom here. Um, there is a male section, there's a female section, and then you can also pay somewhere in the middle, and there's a kitchen where you can prepare a meal for your family real quick. Again, this is still in the center of the slum. But that's to tell you how bad it is for people to be able to have to go somewhere else to use the bathroom just because they don't have it at home. Now talking about the fillet fish and what these people do for a living. So across, right across from that slum, you actually find this venue which actually had a fire recently and the people don't have their, their shell, shelters anymore. The, the bag with the fish lying here actually came straight from the industries that the fillet has been done. And you can see they hang them all out here. They, they scrape off the skin and they are used for different things. So these are the women who sit down when they bring in the raw material from the, from the industries. They scrape out the fish that they can still use for consumption at home. And then some of the skin... They can, they can hang them out and use them to produce other things. And then the ones that are thrown out, which you see in one of the other pictures, 
the ones that is that thrown out, these ones that are hung are actually still going to be further used. And then those that are thrown out like this are going to be sent to another for the people who prepare like food for like chickens and other animals, they can crush them and actually use them um, to produce different things. So it's a lot, it's a lot that the people get out of um, these industries. And these bags are sold really expensively right now, considering that they found out that these people need it. Then the part that the, the parts of the fish that have been collected that can still be further used, they are deep fried. Deep fried and actually packaged in these bags and even exported to other parts of the country. But again, this is only consumed by really low income people really low income people and of course when you start thinking about the health consequence of eating deep fried um, fish skin as your staple, you can just imagine what happens to them in the long run. But this is what they can afford. This is what they live on. So it's a combination of being pushed out of a livelihood into really horrible living conditions. You have no access to proper education or proper work. You end up living off the remnants of what the industries in the community has to offer. Of course, you end up being a sick person. You end up being a, um, a, um, um, somebody whose human rights are totally trampled on. SIT actually contributed to um, an endeavor with this community to be able to um, get them to, to get a piece of land which rightfully belongs to them, but because somebody with a better voice or more money in the community has just fenced them out of it. So if you, if you look at this picture um, at the back here, you see the wall just back there. It's a huge piece of land which these people rightfully own, but because there is somebody in the community who has more money and is able to pay off the government officials, has been able to build a fence around it and owns it. But SIT has contributed together with the community and they are actually at this moment fighting and are, uh, in court and are able to and probably are going to be able to um, get back this land and the people can build their, their little businesses or homes again in this area. So that's actually something that is going on in the program and you actually get to participate or see. Um, going ahead, um, I asked the students on the program to walk me through the program, what actually happened. So when you arrive, when the students arrive at the program, they go straight to Kisumu and the first week of the program is orientation. And then they do a two week of organization and human rights. And of course, this is in Kisumu and the pictures I just showed you is most of the communities they'll be visiting and working with. So. Um, after they have done a lot of work around these communities, understanding the urbanization and the human rights factors or how the people are um, marginalized at so many levels, they have a week-long um, um, time with the Camry. Again, I showed you pictures of Camry. However, we have had a lot of interest in this area and students are asking for more time. So the time is in the future, we plan to increase the amount of time students spend in Camry. So probably it will move from a week to about two weeks. And then Semenya is one of the villages they visit um, for seven days. While here, students come up with public health questions, practice their Swahili and get, to, um, and get assistance to translate questionnaires for their ISPs. So if you have any ideas of what you want to do, and again, learning the local language, if you're going to be working with communities of people who only speak Swahili, of course, you're going to get help to actually get your, your questionnaires translated. Um, Muhoroni, um, they visit here for one night on their way to Nairobi. There is a sugarcane plantation where the students actually get to spend the night and visit. Then Kericho, um, it's also um, a huge um, area which has the tea factory and tea plantations. And again, the students get to visit and actually see how um, these um, factories work. And then they spend two nights in Kisi and visit Tabaka. There is a great deal of urbanization happening in this town and there is a visible upgrade in the economic standards of living as a result of finances being injected into the community by members, uh, by family members who are living abroad. Um, they meet with advocates who work on human rights issues, especially around female genital mutilation. One other human rights issue which is being dealt with in Kisi is the fact that the people are generally violent and hot-tempered. So it's um, a known issue being dealt with, thus 
lots of human rights and abuse issues are dealt with in this community. Masai Mara for two nights. Masai Mara, of course, it's like where everybody wants to go to when you go to East Africa. So it's a lot of safari and visiting the Masai families. Students get to stay in guest houses here as well um, while they are visiting this community. Um, they're in Nairobi for 17 days. Again, this may be cut down because we want to try to increase the time in Camry, but this is actually what's going on this semester. While in Nairobi, you're introduced to research methods, project proposals are written, internships are figured out, and in the last two days before departure to Kigali, students verify their contacts for internships and ISPs. Just to conclude on them, because as soon as they return from Kigali, they are immediately starting their internships or um, independent study programs. So, um, when the students visit Kigali, um, urbanization and Rwanda as well as the progressive health system, you get to see a lot. Of course, if you're visiting Rwanda or Kigali, you get to get a sense of um, the, um, the genocide. So, basically, you look at the anatomy of the genocide. Rwanda before the genocide, Rwanda during the genocide, and Rwanda after the genocide. You get to see how far they have come and you understand why Rwanda or Kigali in particular is such a great place to be in considering everything they've been through. So when students return from Rwanda, they go, they start their internships for the last month of the program. And then after that, they go to um, Uganda for a little briefing and it's a, it's a, they go to Jinja, it's a really beautiful um, venue, just to relax and, you know, conclude their programs while there and um, back to Kisumu for final and departure. Um, again, this is just completely exciting. Like I said in the beginning, you get to see the comparative angle of the program in Kenya because you visit Rwanda and Uganda, and of course, around Kenya. Every community in Africa has a lot of diversity, and even within that diversity, even though they speak the same language, you can still see a difference, if not in the people's culture, at least in their living standards. So there is that much you get to see and compare. So we, I looked into majors um, as they relate to program topic. So. Um, we have students, these are actually from students who are on the program right now. The student who is doing public policy, her research is going to be on air quality. She had studied a little bit of this before and just wanted something relatable and different. You know, being in Kenya, she thought it would be another opportunity to study air quality. Then international relations, generally going abroad as a part of her major, and concentration, her concentrations are in Africa and the Middle East, and wanted to continue her language studies, or just the fact that the SIT program has an immersive angle, she wanted to have that experience with her international relations major. Sociology, um, um, she, she says she goes to a school with a very um, traditional um, style, so she wanted to take a program that will supplement her studies. So nothing traditional, more the experiential learning and the cultural immersion. And then global studies, um, she chose the program from a language interest. Um, her focus is in environment and health, child health, and different forms of health care. And then we also had a chemistry, we actually had two chemistry majors. Um, one of them interested because it it has not been explored before, um, just just coming to Kenya and and looking at these different aspects. And another one is interested in pediatric care. Um, we also had urban studies, of course, very uh, very valid considering the the, the 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 switches and different aspects of urbanization in Kenya. And then, of course, sociology and biology. Those are just, these are just an example, these are just examples of majors of the students who are on the program this semester. But of course our programs are very interdisciplinary and can take people from pretty much any background as long as you can coin it to fit your interests or your major. So program topics and experience. So when I ask the students here, like just to tell me um, why they chose the program, they said the topic is very relatable and felt like they needed to interact more with the community. You know, like, despite the amount of time they spent with them, they feel like, oh, they need more time. 
you know, they wanted to, 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 to spend more time with like the women who actually fry the fish. Remember I showed you the skins of the fish that have been fried that are about to be imported. They wanted to spend more time with them. They enjoyed being with the Maseno University students. Oh, I didn't mention that, but in Kisumu, you actually work slightly in partnership with the Maseno University, and you're able to have classes there around urbanization and, of course, human rights, and they do interact with some of the students when they go into those slums and the communities to work with. Kisumu is a hub for international organizations. I briefly mentioned this earlier. And you know, there are different international organizations just walking through the, the neighborhood where the SIT campus is situated. I saw CARE International, PLAN International, those are a few of the international organizations I know of, but there are a lot of other ones, so a lot of international presence, a lot of expatriates, a lot of foreigners in the area, so it makes it really exciting to be around sometimes. And then examples of organizations students can work with, of course, CAMRI. Um, public hospitals, NGOs in the slums like Kibera, the specific organization um, will be determined by the student's field of interest. Um, children's homes, FIDA takes care of women's legal issues. The specific ministries, e.g. the county government's office in charge of water, health and human rights. So these are just a few of the organizations or samples and these all pretty much are in Kisumu, not to mention when you go again to Nairobi which is a bigger place. So you have all these opportunities at your fingertips and the program is always there to help you. So homestay experiences, differences, similarities and what you wish you knew before. So this was something I asked the students to tell me about to be able to convey this information to you. So one of them said expected homestay to be like a family back home but chances are that is not going to be real or is not going to be a reality to expect. So the advice they had for you coming on the program is be patient, be open, um, be content that you will not have as much time. Oh, actually, sorry about that. It's actually be conscious that you will not have as much time for yourself. So there is no alone time. That's, that's actually, it's actually a cultural thing which you will get to pick up. Like there is always people um, who are willing to check up on you, who are willing to, you know, be in your face about things, which that's how the American culture is going to look at. But to them, it's just concern and trying to be a part of it. So you get to learn that really early in the program, that your home stays, they just want to permanently be checking up on you, talking to you. There is just that whole idea of community a lot in, in Kenya. And being able to deal with the uncomfortable situations. So sometimes you go through those things where you're wondering, oh my God, this is weird. But again, you just need to take a deep breath, breathe, breathe, and go through it. Once you're able to break through these barriers, you're going to have a fantastic time on the program. And I also asked them, how do you think you have changed from this experience or just the quote? So one of them said, now they realize they just go with the flow than they did before. Another one said, came to the program to learn how to practice public health and is learning more about problems in public health and challenges with figuring out solutions. Because again, when you think about what public health is or when you come to help a community, you don't just come with the standard um, procedures or how you're going to work through this, but sometimes there are underlying challenges which you haven't even started to look at before you can actually solve this, the issue that is glaring. There are always underlying factors, you know. So this student is just saying how she's thinking now. She's not, she didn't come, she, she, the, I, the, the reason why she came is slowly changing. But it's, it's nothing wrong to be able to go back with more questions than you had coming. That's part of learning. And then another one said she feels like the SIT programs make students experience more meaningful, um, the, make students experience more meaningful compared to other study abroad programs. And the examples that they used here was the American University students because you actually get an opportunity while in Nairobi to interact with the American University students who are present. And of course I'm going to leave that up to you to be a judge of when you meet them and how you feel about um, your experience and theirs. So um, another thing to note is of course, you're going to have Swahili classes pretty much every day or everyday experience to practice Swahili, either at your homestays, on the streets, with your teachers, or within yourselves. So the Swahili class um, 
uses the direct method, which is aimed at getting the students to speak the language and does not depend on the number of semesters a student has studied Swahili. So you realize that sometimes you could have had three semesters of Swahili abroad, but when it comes down to speaking the language, it's a completely different ballgame. So this is just an idea of my experience or what students have experienced on the program. And um, I know it's sometimes hard to digest or to, 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 to put everything out to you in one go, but I would appreciate individual um, calls or reach out to me to talk more specifically about something of interest to you. Um, thank you very much for attending this and I look forward to hearing from you or seeing your application at least. All right, thank you.